This is Paul Exner, about 24 hours away from the approach of Hurricane Irma, presently a Category 4, expected to develop to a Category 5. Irma will pass just to the north of us here on Tortola in the British Virgin Islands. All indications say within 30 nautical miles. I'm not sure it makes that much of a difference, but the trend has consistently shown the path to move more south as each day of forecast has marched forward. Time will tell what this will bring. We're expecting winds between 100 and 140 knots, torrents of rain, and storm surge in excess of 10 feet. I'm recording this from the very room that me and my family will weather this storm out in. I'm hoping that everyone in the path of Irma will be safe and that there is minimal damage to property and infrastructure. I just want to read to you something I found very interesting from the United States Coast Pilot number 5, which uh, covers Gulf of Mexico, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Uh, it's published by uh, NOAA and the U.S. Department of Commerce. I'm just going to read it aloud because it discusses the signs of approach for a tropical cyclone, which would be this hurricane. Signs of approach. While National Hurricane Center warnings provide information for locating and avoiding a tropical cyclone, it's important to know the sequence of events leading to its passage. An early indication of the approach of such a storm is the presence of a long swell. In the absence of a tropical cyclone, the crests of a swell in deep waters of the Atlantic pass at a rate of perhaps eight per minute. Swell generated by a tropical cyclone is about twice as long, the crests passing at the rate of perhaps four per minute. The swell may be observed several days before the arrival of the storm. Little interjection here, we are seeing swell approach. I live just above Josias Bay uh, and there's a surfing beach down there exposed to the northern uh, Atlantic. And uh, every day I've been watching the swell get a little bit bigger and pulsate in uh, long, uh, long breaks between uh, those sets. I'll continue. When the storm center is 500 to 1,000 miles away, the barometer usually rises a little and exhibits a slight pumping action. Skies are relatively clear and cumulus clouds, if present at all, are few in number and their vertical development appears suppressed. Snow white fibrous mare's tails, cirrus, appear when the storm is about 300 to 600 miles away. Usually these seem to converge more or less in the direction from which the storm is approaching. Shortly after the cirrus appears, the barometer starts a long, slow fall. At first, the fall is so gradual that it appears only to alter somewhat the normal daily cycle, two maximums and two minimums in the tropics. As the rate of fall increases, the daily pattern is completely lost in the more or less steady fall. The cirrus becomes confused and tangled and then gradually gives way to a continuous veil of cirrostratus. Below this veil, altostratus forms, and then stratocumulus. These clouds gradually become more dense, and as they do so, the weather becomes unsettled. A fine, mist-like rain begins to fall, interrupted from time to time by showers. The barometer has fallen perhaps 0.1 inch, which would be 3 millibars. As the fall becomes more rapid, the wind increases in gustiness and its speed becomes greater, reaching perhaps 22 to 40 knots. On the horizon appears a dark wall of heavy cumulonimbus, the bar of the storm. Portions of this heavy cloud become detached from time to time and drift across the sky, accompanied by rain squalls and wind of increasing speed. Between squalls, the cirrostratus can be seen through the breaks of the stratocumulus. As the bar approaches, the barometer falls more rapidly and wind speed increases. The seas, which have been gradually mounting, 
become tempestuous, and squall lines, one after the other, sweep past in ever-increasing number and intensity. With the arrival of the bar, the day becomes very dark, squalls become virtually continuous, and the barometer falls precipitously with a rapid increase in wind speed. The center may still be 100 to 200 miles away in a hurricane. As the center of the storm comes closer, the ever stronger wind shrieks through the rigging and about the superstructure of the vessel as the center approaches. Rain falls in tor torrents. The wind's fury increases. The seas become mountainous. The tops of huge waves are blown off to mingle with the rain and fill the air with water. Objects at a short distance are not visible. Even the largest and most seaworthy of vessels become virtually unmanageable and may sustain heavy damage. Less sturdy vessels do not survive. Navigation virtually stops as safety of the vessel becomes the prime consideration. The awesome fury of this condition can only be experienced. Words are inadequate to describe it. If the eye of the storm, which may be from 5 to 30 miles across, passes over the vessel, the winds suddenly drop to a breeze as the wall of the eye passes. The rain stops and skies clear to permit the sun shine through the thin cloud cover. Visibility improves and confused mountainous seas approach from all sides. The barometer reaches its lowest point. As the wall on the opposite side of the eye arrives, the full fury of the wind strikes as suddenly as it ceased, but from the opposite direction. The sequence of conditions that occurred during approach of the storm is reversed and pass more quickly as the various parts of the storm are not as wide in the rear as on the forward side of the storm. Take care, looking for fair winds. Paul Exner, signing out.